Hello everyone and welcome back to another Infinite Galaxy video. Today we want to look at the next flagship. Um, today we want to have a look at the Nemesis. Um, I was a really big fan of the Nemesis and I pushed it even on my farm account because um, it is really strong in campaign. So um, we do have laser weapon attack as skill one. We have um, increased damage of the flagship at skill two. Um, reduced losses on skill three and reduced damage to the flagship on skill three. So um, that is something very, very interesting. On skill four, we do have an increased re range of the deployed fleet and skill 5 increases flagship HP and warship HP. So overall you do have for the flagship increased attack up to 100%. You can reduce the damage up to 70%. You can increase the HP while reducing the damage. So this is really huge. And um, this is one of the I think it's a third ship you get after the Argo. So you start with the Hercules, you get the Argo, and then you already get the Nemesis. Um, pretty thing. So the skills are really nice. The flagship is known to be used in campaign because even also if you go to campaign and um, you look at the skills from the flagship, you got your uh, AOE, you got your damage. But um, skill 4 is increasing the attack of the flagship and skill 5 is reducing the cooldown time of the flagship weapons. So compared to skill 4 and 5 of um, Hercules, your starter ship, where you reduce the cost to recruit warships and you increase the attack of the flagship and increase the attack of turrets. Um, here you got increased attack and you got um, reduced cooldown of the weapons, which is um, pretty nice. Also, many people forget that uh, campaign skills are not the same skills as you have for battle. So um, many think they check the skills here, um, and um, these are the same skills in campaign. They are not. So um, skill-wise, very strong on flagship oriented the nemesis and um, where to use it so first thing you have only two different types of uh, flagships that can reduce the ratio of battle losses and um, nemesis is one of these so um, you got the two sorry you got the nemesis and the athena with the skill and then you do have, where do we have them? Here, the Odysseus and um, the Apollo with also skill reducing the losses in battle. This is, in my opinion, probably the best skill you can use in PvP when you attack other players' bases. That's important if you just do some fights in space, attacking other fleets, it doesn't really matter, but when you go out there to farm other players' bases, um, permanent losses are what scares you most and what makes farming other players, um, yeah, risky. So there is one other thing I want to point out where I think the nemesis has some hidden talents. Um, we can reduce the damage taken by up to 70%. At the same time, we can increase the HP of the flagship by 25%, meaning the nemesis is a tank. Okay, so here we are. We got the nemesis. I put cruisers inside, HP and armor modules, and send it now to the pirates. And I hope I can show you um, how the range works together with a flagship. So um, I hope we can see that 
our flagship will tank for the main damage, most of it, and as it got the skills to reduce the damage and um, got the high HP, it survives till nearly we already killed 50% of the enemy before it died. So um, the nemesis can tank or will tank your cruisers in this um, in these setups. We can also check the records replay. It's um, much better visible there. So while it's still, you can see that the flagship is behind. The flagship is the only one where the shield was lit up. So all the enemies are attacking the flagship, killing it before they go to our cruisers. Um, where is this good? This is mainly good for scenarios where we will have um, multiple fights because the flagship is there after each fight. So let's say you go out um, with some friends and you hunt um, alien spirits. We always have the event here, um, not alien spirits, sorry. Um, why don't I see it here on the left side? The ghost ships. So if you go and hunt ghost ships, um, you will go to many different ghost ships without going back to your base in um, purpose of getting the highest possible points for you individually as well as for your alliance. Um, so there it is great if the damage first goes to your flagship because even if your flagship gets destroyed after the fight it's back with 100% HP and shield. If your warships get destroyed during the fight they will not come back automatically. You first have to go back to your base and then all the warships that are, don't need repair will be back in your fleet. So if you got a group of people shielding all your cruisers with their flagships will mean you will reduce the losses on the warship side. Um, it's working very similar to um, to the Brontus. It's a tactic I use, I like to use um, a lot with my lines. If I send my Brontus fleets, you do have all the other fleets there shielding you with their frigates, with their cruisers, and the same thing there. Usually the Brontus dies before the cruisers get damaged. So. Now, where is the advantage between the Prontus and the Nemesis? It's pretty simple. Let's let's strip them both. Um, now I can also show it. The advantage is you get reduced damage on the flagship. You do get additional flagship HP. So and you do get. Where do we have it? The additional flagship attack. Yeah, that doesn't help you. Um, you do get reduced damage on your flagship and you do get increased flagship HP. So this will allow the nemesis to stand there a little bit longer than the Prontus. Um, no question, the Prontus will allow you to have higher damage as it increases the uh, attack. Um, also the bonus against others, more attack increase and then a total warship attack. So if you run the Prontus with cruisers only, you do get three skills increasing the attack directly. Um, but we will come to the Prontus another time. Anyhow, if you look at this, um, I think the Nemesis got some hidden talents there, shielding the cruisers with the flagship itself, reducing the losses in PvP. These are big things. So um, what warships would I use? Um, you can use everything with it. You got a um, bonus on the laser weapons from the main weapon. Um, I would use a mixed fleet with the highest um, warships that you have. If you go out there for uh, multi-point attacks like um, ghost ships, uh, increase the number of cruisers you have. This way you might do a few more 
um, ghost ships before you need to repair. For the modules, um, adjust the weapons based on the warships you use. As you got laser here, um, I think you already know I'm a big fan of laser um, cruisers and I like to combine them with missile um, destroyers and missile frigates. Missile frigates also just because they have the highest armor. So the missile frigates are there to tank as much as possible. Then um, you can choose either you get um, laser or you get missile um, destroyers. Um, use whatever is higher and um, then use the weapons um, probably more laser so yeah so you will do the most damage if you do laser destroyers laser cruisers laser weapons and then the missile frigates for tank put two um, hp modules inside two armor modules and you will have a very robust fleet your cruisers very likely will get um, damaged last and um, if they get damaged last they will be able to put out the highest damage they can. Besides that there are no skills that increase um, specific warship attacks so um, nothing to look there. A very very important skill is the reduced um, battle losses in PvP so that makes the nemesis perfect for attacking enemy star bases and um, yeah that's where I used it and where I still use it when I attack star bases. Um, my nemesis fleet is the first fleet to break through the um, enemy defense and after this I um, many times switch over to increase the transport capacity so that I don't have to fly so many times towards the enemy to get the resources. Hope you liked the video. Give it a thumbs up, um, please subscribe to my channel and see you on the next video.